Hello friends, you are welcome back again to Sapima tutorial. In our lesson today, we shall be considering simultaneous linear equation involving indices. If you observe these equations, they are exponential indices. And we are given two equations expected to solve at the same time, looking for two different variables, x and y. How do we approach such a problem? We are going to consider it in this lesson. But before we continue, you may need to go back to my two previous videos and watch the laws of indices because we are going to make applications of laws of indices while we are solving. In the, pre in the last video, I treated single equations, okay? I treated single equations where we solve indices involving equations. So in this video, we are looking at two equations at a time involving two variables. Pay attention here, here, and here, most especially. Students miss it a lot with questions like this. You observe that the bases here are not equal. They are not same. And then there is nothing you can do to get 3 and 2 to become equal base. I will teach you how to solve cases like this. So let's start with the first one. Whenever you have the basis of your initial equation to be equal, the next thing you will do is to equate their powers. So from here, I have 5 raised to the power x plus 2y to be equal to 5 raised to the power of 1. Every number has, every number has a natural power, which is 1. Then for the second one, I will have 4 raised to the power of x plus 3y equal to 4 raised to the power of 2. 4 power 2 will give us 16. Having done that, 4 and 4 here are equal bases. 5 and 5 are equal bases. Therefore, drop their powers. So the powers we have are x plus 2y equal to 1, and then x plus 3y equal to 2. So you see we have a simple linear equation to, to battle with simultaneously. So let's subtract. We are using elimination method x minus x will give me 0, 2 minus 3y, 2y minus 3y will give me minus y. You know that 2 minus 3 is minus 1, so we have minus 1. Equal to 1 minus 2 gives me minus 1. Then let us eliminate the negative sign here by dividing both sides by a negative 1, so that minus cancels minus. y over 1 is y. 1 over 1. Negative, we cancel negative. So I will have the value of my y to be equal to 1. Having gotten y as 1, substitute 1 in any of these equations to get your x. Let's move with equation 1. Equation 1 says x plus 2y equal to 1. So anywhere you see y, put 1 there. I will have x plus 2 into 1 equal to 1. Then multiply and collect like terms. 2 times 1 is 2. Move it over this way. I'll have x be 1 minus 2. x, 1 minus 2 will give me minus 1. So we'll have x be minus 1. Therefore, when x is equal to minus 1, y will be positive 1. This becomes the solution of this equation. If you put minus 1 and 1 for x and y, you are getting 5. After simplifying, you can try it. Let's move straight to the second one. We are going to do the same. Reduce the basis to become equal in each of the equations. I have 5 raised to the power of x minus y equal to 5 raised to the power 3. 5 raised to the power 3 will give me 125. Then for the second one, I have 4y minus x to be equal to 3 raised to the power of 4. 3 power 4 will give me 2, 4, 3. Now that the power's bases are equal, what do we do next? Nice. Drop the powers. Equal to 3. Then here, I'll have 4y minus x equal to 4. In this case, I will not use elimination method because x and y are not properly arranged. I have x here and x here so i can't come here and subtract i can choose to rearrange okay we can rearrange and multiply by negative in order to bring this guy outside but when i have cases like this 
it is easier to use elimination um, substitution method. So let's go. Using substitution method, make x the subject of formula here. That means I'll have x to be equal to 3 plus y. Let this be equation 1, equation 2. Then the one we have formed, we can call it equation 3. Y moved over to this side to become the plus y because it's negative here. Having done this, anywhere you see x in equation 2, substitute it with 3 plus y. Okay? So we'll have 4y minus, instead of writing x, I'll write this one. Don't forget to put it in brackets because this minus will affect the both of them. And this is equal to 4. Then we we'll simplify. I'll have 4y minus times 3 will give me minus 3. Minus times plus y will give me minus y equal to 4. Then let's subtract like terms and add like terms. 4 minus y. 4y minus y will give me 3y. Take minus 3 across this side. You will have 4 plus 3, which is 7. 3y equal to 7. Then we divide both sides by 3 to get y. I'll divide by 3. Divide by 3. That means my y will be equal to 7 over 3. Having gotten y as 7 over 3, take it and substitute for y in equation 3, the one we made the subject of formula. We are going to have x equal to 3, putting this guy here, plus 7 over 3. Then add by the means of LCM. The LCM should be 3. LCM of the denominators. 3 divided by 1 is 3 times 3. I will have 9. 3 divided by 3 is 1 times 7. I will have 7. Then add the both of them. We we'll have 16. So I will have 16 over 3 to be the value of x. We are going to report our answer in mixed fractions, seeing that they are improper fractions. So at the end of the day, I will have x to be equal to 5 whole number 1 over 3, converting this guy to a mixed fraction when y is 2 whole number 1 over 3. So these are the values of x and y for which this equation holds. Then I'll take you through number 3. You may need to pay serious attention here because this is not like these two. Unlike the first one and the second one, this one and this one, they have bases that can never be made equal. Here, we were able to, we succeeded in making this base, the bases equal and then we equated the power. But there's nothing I can do to 3 and 3, 2 and 3 to make it equal. Same here. Then over here, this can be reduced to 2, this can be reduced to 3. So there is nothing we can possibly do. So what do we do from here? We are going to employ another method, substitution. We'll choose any variable of our choice and substitute for 2 and 3. But before we can do that, we have to separate the powers here. So that we'll have the same term here and here. Like terms here and here. Look at what I mean. A lot of indices says that when you have powers added, you can separate it to the basis and multiply the basis. So I'll have power x, power 2. Because of this addition, I'll have power x and power 2 separating the base, but we are multiplying. Do the same thing here. Take base 3, power y, times base 3, power 1, separating the powers, equal to 8. Then 2 raised to power 2 is 4. This is that multiply this one. We'll have 4 into 2 raised to power x. Please take note that 2 raised to power x is an exponential function. Therefore, this guy cannot multiply it. Anytime you see a number carrying a variable, don't use a number to multiply it. Rather, when you multiply, use that number as its coefficient. Minus, come over here. 3 raised to power 1 is 3. Then 3 multiply this one gives us 3 into 3 raised to power y equal to 8. All right. At this point, we have 3 power y, 2 power x. The same we have here, 2 power x, 3 power y. So we can quickly get any variable of our choice and substitute. Let us use v and u. So we can say let v be equal to 2 raised to power x and u be equal to 3 raised to power y. So anywhere you see 2 power x in equation 1 and 2, put v, same as 3 power y. Then let's substitute. Starting with this one, I'll have v plus, this is u, 
u equal to 9. Then move over to the second one. I will have, this is 4, write down your coefficient. Instead of writing 2 power x, we'll write v, okay? We have v plus, sorry, subtraction, we have subtraction, minus 3. Instead of writing 3 raised to the power y, I will write, I will write u equal to 8. At this point, we solve the simultaneous equation. Let's label this equation 1 and equation 2. I prefer using substitution method. Most students always like using elimination. But I'll use substitution so that you will also learn how to solve substitution method. So make V the subject formula in equation 1. That means I will have V to be equal to 9 minus U. U has moved over. So V is standing alone. Then substitute V with 9 minus U in equation 2. Anywhere you see V in this equation 2, put 9 minus U there. So we are going to have 4 into 9 minus U. Since this place is V, I'll use this now replace it. Minus 3U equal to 8. Then let us open the brackets. 4 times 9 will give me 36. 4 times minus U minus 4U minus 3U equal to 8. Then subtract and add like terms, collecting like terms. 36 will come over here. I'll have 8 minus 36. Then minus 4u minus 3u will give us minus 7u. Subtract here, we have minus 7u equal to minus 28. Divide both sides by minus 7. Divide by minus 7. This will cancel this. So I'll have u to be equal to minus take care of minus 27 over 28 over 7 will give me 4. So we've got u as 4. Then let us get v using this equation, the one we formed. Call it equation 3. So since we are looking for v, v equal to 9 minus u. Since we have gotten u as 4, put it here. I will have v equal to 9 minus 4. 9 minus 4 will give me 5. So I will have v to be equal to 5. So when u is 4, my v is 5. But this is not our solution. Remember that what we are looking for is x and y, and all we have gotten is v and u. So we are going to make use of this equation to get our x and y. This equation we formed, where we got relationship between x and v. That is what we will use to get our x and y. So in that case, since my v is gotten as 5, I will say that 5 is equal to this guy, 2 power x. And since u has been gotten as 4, look at this. Where is it? Look at this. I will say that this is 4 equal to 3 raised to the power of y. Then we are faced with another problem. Because we are looking for x, and there's no way we can solve this thing using indices because 5 and 2 are not the same base and cannot be turned to the same base. So we are going to change this guy into logarithm in order to get x and y. How do we do that? Use these two as your logarithm base. So have log base 2. Use the, the subject here as your logarithm number. Use this power as your subject. Of course, you know we are looking for x. So since we are looking for x, x ha has to be the subject. Then do the same thing for this one. The 3 will be our base. So we'll have log base 3. And then 4, which is the subject, becomes the log number equal to y, since we are looking for x and y. So at this point, you can use the rule of logarithm to simplify this. Use the rule of logarithm to also simplify this. Maybe we need to go through all the process so that you understand how to use rule of logarithm to simplify these two guys. So we are going to apply change of base. For the first one, x will be equal to log 5 base 10 over log 2 base 10. The numbers here, we take separate logarithm, introduce a natural logarithm, which is 10. Do the same thing for the second one. y will be equal to log 4 base 10 over log 3 base 10.
So at this point, we make use of our calculator to press it. Press log 5 over log 2, you get the value. Press log 4 over log 3, you get the value. Okay, so this is x. This is giving me 2.3219. Then we do the same thing for x, for y. And this is giving me 1.2619. And this becomes the solution of the number 3 question. We can take the video back over again and watch it and observe the steps gradually. I believe you will understand it. Okay? Thank you so much for paying attention to the end of the class. Don't forget to like this video, share it to your friends, and subscribe for more interesting mathematics tutorials. God bless you. Bye.